the only thing between us and the possibility of alien life, this layer of ice. But until we send a spacecraft to drill through the ice, Europa will remain one of the solar system's greatest mysteries. It's captivated our imaginations, haunted our dreams. And here it is, spinning before our eyes. Saturn, the jewel in the solar system's crown. Seeing it makes everything we've experienced worthwhile. There's something magical about Saturn. A giant ball of gas, so light it would float on water. Its spectacular rings would stretch almost from Earth to the moon, but they're just a few hundred meters deep. That's the Cassini orbiter. It's picking up ghostly radio emissions, probably generated by auroras around Saturn's poles. This is the real music of the spheres. And Cassini is telling us these rings are probably all that's left of a moon shattered by Saturn's gravitational pull. Incomparable beauty from total destruction. Billions of shards of ice, some as small as ice cubes, others the size of houses. They collide, break apart, reassemble. It's like a snapshot of our early solar system. As dust and gas orbited the newly born sun and gravity worked its magic. Pulling the lumps together until from debris like this, our home emerged. We could stay here forever, gazing at Saturn's seductive allure. But we have to drag ourselves away. We've got so much further to go, so much more to learn. Which isn't easy when the largest object in sight is this moon, wrapped in thick clouds. Titan. like there's an atmosphere down here. There's wind, rain, even seasons. And look at these rivers, lakes and oceans. It's the most similar place to Earth we've seen so far. Maybe it was worth tearing ourselves away from Saturn after all. Except that's not water. That's liquid natural gas. There must be hundreds of times more natural gas here than all the Earth's oil and gas reserves. If we could get it home, it could power our cities, fuel our cars for thousands of years. Or maybe, one day, we could use it here to fuel a colony. Assuming there isn't life on Titan already. The Huygens space probe dropped onto Titan's surface from Cassini is here to find out. It's telling us there are organic materials in the soil, but it's so cold, minus 180 degrees. There's no way these could come together to form life, unless Titan warms up. The sun is predicted to get hotter. When it does, maybe life will spring up here just like it did on Earth billions of years ago. As the Earth gets too hot for us, maybe we'll move to Titan. One day we might call this distant place home. Home, where at least
least a billion kilometers away now. Beyond this point, we lose visual contact with the Earth. We're standing on a cliff, looking out into the solar system's mysterious outer reaches. If we want to understand the universe, to reach its edge, we have to jump. Unseen from Earth, unknown for most of history, we're in the solar system's outer reaches. It's like diving down into the deep ocean. Those rings. It looks like Uranus has been tilted off its axis, toppled over by a stray planet. It's eerie out here. Already beginning to feel small, lonely. Maybe this is how we'll feel, what we'll find at the edge of the universe. But we've barely left the shore. Shrink the Earth down to the size of a pea. We've traveled less than two kilometers. But to reach the edge of the solar system, we've got to travel another 20,000 kilometers. Out of the deep, another strange beast. The god of the sea, Neptune. This giant is swathed in methane gas. And look, a storm the size of Earth whipped up by savage 1,500 kilometer an hour winds. Back home, it's the sun that drives the wind, but Neptune's too far away. Something else must be creating these ferocious winds, but nobody knows what. Our solar system is huge. It's alarming how little we really know about it. Plunging deeper, something to cling to. After all those balls of gas, a solid moon. Triton. Solid, but not stable. Just look at these geysers, cosmic chimneys pumping out strange soot. And this moon is going round Neptune in the opposite direction to the planet's spin. A cosmic battle of wills that this angry moon is always going to lose. Neptune's massive gravity is pulling on Triton, slowing it down, reeling it in. One day, it'll be ripped apart by Neptune. And that's it. No more moons, no more planets to see in our solar system. It's getting colder. We're getting further from the sun, slipping from the grip of its gravitational tentacles. But look at all this. It's not a void. It's teeming with frozen rocks, icy spheres, like Pluto. Until recently, it seemed Pluto was alone. Beyond it, nothing. We were wrong. More frozen worlds. Discoveries so new, nobody can agree what to call them. Plutinos, Ice Dwarfs, Cubanos. Whatever the name, the implications are the same. Our solar system.